Guys, if you needed more proof about why the reserve list is going to stick around, this is the video for you. You should be watching it from number 10 to number 1. This is the hottest selling cards on the reserve list, but it's more than that. The sales numbers are solidifying. You should see what we're about to talk about. Well, just stick around. We're going to get this party started, and it starts right now. We always hear that people don't like reserve list cards, but I think this kind of flies in the face of that with this week's sales. Welcome back, MTG Moxman here. A reminder, if you like today's content, like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bells, new content every day. And of course, don't forget to use my TCG Player affiliate link. You'll find it in the description of this video. So let's dive right in to the number 10 card this week. And let's face it, guys, with all the crazy stuff that went on in the reserve list sales, there's a lot to cover in this video. So we're starting out with Mox Diamond at number 10. 53 sales this week, which is $34,978.41. This card has an average price of $659.97 US. Now, if nobody cares about reserve list cards, if nobody wants to buy them, why are they selling so many? What's going on to make this card as popular as it is? What are people thinking about? when they spend almost $700 on a card. Well, they're not just wasting their money, they're buying it for a reason. They are putting their money where their mouth is, they are flexing, they are collecting, they are aspiring to get something, whatever it may be, whatever reason they may have, I guarantee it's not just to throw their money away. They want the card. They want to be able to collect it and buy it. Now, that's kind of insane to think about as we jump here to number nine, that people would spend this much money on cards. But let's face it, if you love reserve list cards, and you can get them at a bargain, you know, discount, a damaged copy, heavily played. By the way, 57 sales for Tropical Island. That's $32,335.53. The perception of a deal can kind of get the blood flowing. That FOMO idea that you open up your wallet and spend that money is definitely one of those things that brought to attention a lot of players' minds. They looked at the deals they could get their hands on. They said, I can afford this dual land because with this kickback, using my credit card, dropping in this, maybe a bit of a tax refund, I can finally own a piece of the reserve list that I actually care about. Not the willy-nilly jumpy cards for five bucks, but I'm talking the real deal. The shenanigans, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the skyscraper tower that I finally can own a piece of, and that's where we're at. Guys, Let's take a look at our next card because this stuff starts just getting more insane the further we go down the list today. This is Wheel of Fortune, Revised Edition. $311.44, 58 sales. That's $18,000 US for this card. We're talking that many sales in a seven day period, but let's face it, most of these sales happened in the last 48 hours. We all know what happened. We're all bearing witness to the sheer volume of sales that happened and with good reason. When you're talking those kind of kickbacks, don't forget, if you have a member who's subscribed to TCG Player and they're getting a kickback of 13 to 14%, 1 or 2% on a credit card, and they can somehow get it fairly, you know, fairly decently shipped, they're saving a lot of money, okay? A lot of money, depending on the copy they're going after. And the advantage of getting this all done now is you own it and you're never going to trade it or sell it away. You fire and you forget, like any stock, you're supposed to keep it for long term. You're keeping it for 10, 20 years, not a year. You want to use it, play with it, and just have a blast with it. Our next card is Tundra. Now again, you notice the amount of dual lands on the list this week. 59 sales. $27,788.41 in sales volume. This thing, I can't believe it's as cheap as it is. And you know what? Obviously, a lot of you guys did too because you all bought the card. I don't care if it's Mox Diamond. I don't care if we're jumping in there and get a wheel of fortune. We are just spending, spending, spending. We are putting our money where our mouth is and we're finally getting something we've always wanted. Now for some players, this is a this is a dream to be able to afford one or two of these cards. But after you have one or two, you see that addiction kind of clicks in and you start getting really pumped up and excited like the Mox Man and you want to get your play set at 10. Then you want to get 20, 30, 40, four of each one is, is the ultimate goal, right? For most players though, one of for a commander deck series is great. I can understand it, I can empathize, and I get excited just like you because seeing Tundra make the list again at these sales volumes is insane. But don't worry, it gets worse. Our next card is Volcanic Island. 
That's right, $733.49. That's $44,009.40, 60 sales, okay? Insane. Now here's the thing, I put feelers out to a whole bunch of stores and they don't have any more dual lands. It's funny how they can't get any. Even with their buy list slowly creeping up, they just haven't had anybody turn them in. I wonder why that is. I wonder why people who don't care about the reserve list cards won't trade them in for money. They're holding on to them for some unknown, strange, parasitic reason that flies in the face of things like the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, the Book of the Dead. I can't explain it to you, but I have a feeling people just want the card. Maybe I'm just gullible that way. Now our next card is Badlands. This card comes in with 64 sales, $25,862.40 at $404 and 10 cents on average for a copy of this card. Takes the number five slot. Now the funny thing is guys, the reason we're seeing so many dual lands is because of the deal, we know that. But what happens after this will be even more beguiling to many of you because the sales are gonna drop off a cliff because it's not a deal anymore, there's no discounts but it just bears witness to the fact that if the price is right, people are willing to spend it. Wizards of the Coast could learn something about what's happening right now. They actually will enjoy the fact the reserve list sold this way because it backs up some of the pricing they want to do. But in the end, the dual lands are the dual lands. And every time somebody buys these cards, it just puts another nail, just another nail, and then another nail into the coffin of the reserve list, solidifying that it's never going to get touched again. Our next one is Underground Sea. That's right, guys. Underground Sea at 65 sales comes in at number four. $54,826, okay? Now, by the way, there's a couple of beta sales that I'm going to mention. Although I don't add them to this list, I'm adding it for information so you guys are aware of it. Although those cards are not often sold alpha and betas, they do happen. Unlimited, you get some sales here and there. Never enough to make a top 10 list, but it's still knowledge that's worth having because, again, it's bringing back the point that people are spending money here. Sometimes thousands of dollars for a single copy. Yes, it could be a rich person. Yes, it could be somebody who comes into some weird way of getting money. I don't care. They want the card. Just keep remembering that. Cycle that through your brains. They want the card. Or they wouldn't be spending the money. So it's not that they hate the reserve list. They may be envious. They may be jealous of the reserve list and the prices that keep them from getting some of the cards. But let's face it, it's an amazing thing to own dual lands. It's amazing to get some of these cards. By the way, Plateau's number three. 87 sales this week. $348.98 is the average. That's $30,361.26. Now, there's lots of dual lands that didn't make the list. They got knocked out by other cards I've already shared with you. They're in the you know low 40s and stuff. But it's still 40 sales. Normally, that would definitely make a top 10 listing, but they got knocked off because of the cards. And by the way, the last two cards I'm going to share with you, the number two and number one cards, I had no idea they were going to be on the list this week again. I figured cards like this may be all taking the top spot, but apparently that's not how the ball was going to roll. Playing a little pinball, you never know what's going to come up because the number two card, definitely didn't expect to see it. Shout out to Daniel for letting me know this was coming up there. Guys, our next card... Taking the number two slot for $9.99 a copy is Urtai, the Adept Wizard, okay? Now, $1,268 is absolutely nothing for 127 copies. Yes, it's a lot of money for some people, but I'm saying in terms of the numbers I've just shared with you, the number two card, this is based on volume, not on, you know, pricing of the cards. This isn't like it's a time walk, right? Because let's face it, it takes like 600 copies to get past it. But why are we buying Urtai? Well, it's a Summon Legend 1-1. He counts as a wizard, but he can tap four mana and counter a target spell. Now, I remember using this thing in tons of crazy ways, and there's lots of ways of untapping creatures so you can counter multiple spells if you got the mana to do so. Um, I've always recommended people buy four copies of this. I think at the time, I think it was going to be like $18 for four copies. Yeah, it's kind of slid up a little bit, a dollar or two in value. But guys, it's not a massive card. It will slip back down. Don't rush to get it. It's going to be around, okay? Now, the number one card. Bosium Strip makes it, again, from Weatherlight. Again, I don't know why this one keeps showing up. People just love it. They've been using it a lot more, and I have heard of people building some crazy stuff with it. 130 sales this week. $404.30 uh, of total sales value. And I look at the Strip, and I do recognize it's a great card. I can see where people are going to play with it and utilize it, especially in Commander. But in the future, 
if copies do get shy, does that mean we're just going to ultimately see this thing pushed back up to that $20, $25 level? I don't think it's gonna be a hundred dollar card right away, but over the years, who knows, right? This thing has playability, has some fun factor to it, and there are ways of building around cards like this and adding it and really adapting it to your deck to make it a playable option. So I like it. I don't think it's a game ending card. I'll be honest, but I do think there's a lot of fun in that and that's okay. That's a good thing to see around. So we're gonna get to the end here. And I'm just going to share a little bit of an end section here if you want to stick around for that. And don't forget the Ramble Jamble later on. If you've never been there, it's, it's a room you're going to want to hang out in. So let's get to this. Okay, so we know that we don't care. Nobody cares about the reserve list. It's just, nope, nope, this is all just a fluke. Nope, just pass it by. We didn't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on reserve list cards. No, we didn't. We're not going to admit it. There's no proof now. It's already gone by. It's already happened. It's in the past. It's just another blip on the radar. I'm gonna I'm gonna go proxy my cards. I'm gonna I'm gonna never look at the reserve list again. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna Yeah, I get it. I get it. You're unhappy. You're unhappy. Lots of people are unhappy. But those sales happened. Those sales are gonna continue to happen, not in those volumes for a long time, but they are going to continue to happen because the reserve list is the last secure basin. It's the last castle standing when it comes to value in Magic the Gathering. It is the unreprintable option. It is where people go to say, I've got something that I know is never coming back around. Yeah, there could be millions of copies of a particular card, like a skyscraper going thousands of stories in the air, but you own some rooms in there. You got a little space and a parking space in the basement that's all yours and nobody can ever take it away from you. And that's pretty awesome because the sales really do show me that if there's good value, if there's a good deal, people are willing to spend the money to get those cards and own them. Either way, Interesting conversations are going to happen after this, so stick around, drop some comments in the comments section, and I'll see you guys later. Have a great one. I'll see you at the live stream tonight, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. It'll probably be the same kind of background, but we'll all be here together. I'll see you then. And a big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons we have here on the channel because of them. That daily support means we get to put out content every single day. It means the Mox Man's not going anywhere, and I want to appreciate and thank every single one of you for making that possible. From my YouTube membership members to my patrons, it's because of you. I'll see you tomorrow. What do you what do you say when you see this? What do you what do you think about? This is the Ramble Jamble, by the way. But this is what it comes to. All those people who get upset, all those people who have a hard time understanding how people value things. I don't care if it's a piece of cardboard is what somebody's saying. I don't care if it's a piece of cardboard. I want that particular piece of it. Wouldn't a MTG historian be saying fine luxury cardboard rectangles? It's a luxury. It's expensive. This is not a piece of Toblerone that you're sharing with people. It's a volcanic island. This is, this is not filling up a $40 tank of gas. That's a Mox Diamond. And when people have the opportunity to get it, it just shows that people are going to spend the money and get the cards they want. Now, does this mean cards are going to jack up in price? Absolutely not. No, no. These are just people taking advantage of something they consider to be a good deal, a good opportunity to get some of the cards they've always wanted. And I think that's, I think that's awesome. It's amazing. And I congratulate each and every one of them for taking that bold step. Now I told you guys yesterday, I was so close to getting a bizarre bag that, but because I couldn't see pictures, I couldn't justify it. Somebody ended up buying it by the way, somebody bought it anyway. So I wonder how that card turned out because as much as I want to get that bizarre bag that it's still almost $2,000 Canadian after conversion to get that card. I'm not quite even, well, I'm not even halfway, but I'm getting there. So you're trying to work your way up. Sometimes you gotta be patient. Sometimes you got to wait for your opportunity, and a lot of people saw opportunity in that sale. So congratulations to every single one of you. I hope you love those cards. Awesome. Mmm. Yeah.